What's up guys, welcome back to my channel. In this video we'll be talking about why renting a home might be the biggest financial mistake that most people make. If you are new to this channel, please like and subscribe and stay tuned for more insightful videos. Let's talk about the reasons you shouldn't rent your home. So this goes to say that if you are someone that's planning to move in the following year, or you are someone that moves around a lot, or you're planning to move to a different city, it might be easier for you to rent. In the short term, it might be better for most people to rent. So everything that I'm saying today, just remember that there's certain scenarios where it might be different. For most scenarios, it would definitely be a better financial decision to invest and to actually buy your own home. So let's jump into the advantages of owning your own home. Before we talk about the financial advantages of owning a home, there's a few surface level arguments that we need to talk about. So the first thing would be that you won't have a landlord. And this would probably convince a lot of people already. And just the idea that you don't need to report to someone is a big advantage. The second thing would be that you can basically do what you want. And what I mean with this is you don't necessarily have to confirm with your landlord each and every time that you want to paint the walls or maybe just hang something on the wall. So this is actually something that's really exciting about owning a home because you have the creativity to paint the walls the colors that you like. You can renovate your bathroom or you can actually put in new tiles in your kitchen and you can do to your house what you want. The third thing would be that you can't be asked to leave. And what I mean with this is there's certain scenarios where the landlord can ask you to leave the property because they want to do renovations. Or if they decide to sell the property and the new owner wants to do renovations or they want to stay in the property themselves. This could cost you a lot of extra money if you suddenly need to move to a new rental property and if this is something that you didn't even plan or you didn't even want to move. The fourth advantage is that there will be no rent increases. This is something that happens each and every time your rental agreement needs to be renewed. Almost every landlord will increase their rent because they want to get a part of the profit of the rental market. So let's jump to the financial advantages of owning your own home. So the fifth thing would be forced savings. And this is pretty powerful. The average person doesn't save and most of us spend all of our money and at the end of the month we don't have any money left to invest or to save. The idea of owning your own home forces you to save or pay down a certain amount principal each and every month on your mortgage loan. This is really powerful and what it does is it forces us to save money and obviously we need to live somewhere. So basically you're paying your rent and at the same time you're actually saving or let's call it investing your money into your own home. So number six would be home appreciation. And this is something that is linked to the economic cycles. And obviously there's booms and busts and the market can crash and it can go back up again but over a long period of time the value of your house will always go up so let's say for example you purchased a house for a million rand and you had to put down a 10 percent deposit and so that would be hundred thousand rand let's say the value of the house goes up with five percent the first year so the value of the house would be 50,000 Rand more and divided by the amount of money that you had to put in the deal, which is 100,000 Rand, you have a return on investment of 50%. There's no other place or investment vehicle where you can earn 50% return on investment with other people's money. Number seven would be leverage and this is basically using other people's money and like the previous example of buying a house for a million rand you can get finance for the entire loan amount so let's say you go to the bank and you want to finance that specific house it costs you a million rand but you don't have to put down a deposit or anything so basically you can buy a property worth a million rand without using a cent of your own money and the idea of this is also with home appreciation 
and principal pay down. So basically you are lending a big amount of money from the bank to acquire an asset that grows in value and you only have to make minimum monthly payments. The awesome thing about this is you can be someone that has the million rand cash and you can purchase this property outright. But it's much smarter and the return on investment that you will get by using the bank's finance, in other words, other people's money, the return that you will realize is much bigger. If you buy a property and you invest your own money, it automatically brings down the return on investment because you have more money in the deal. So in essence, when you purchase a house for a million rand and you don't put any money in the deal, ultimately you are buying a property with free money. Number eight would be tax advantages. And there's a long list of tax advantages when you are purchasing property. And the idea of buying property is not solely for the purpose of reducing your tax that needs to be paid, but it does have a few extra tax advantages. The cool thing about owning a home, you can deduct your utilities, the interest portion of your loan, and even insurance from your tax. And this can make a big difference if you are someone that falls into a big um, tax category. If you're already being taxed 40%, then this helps a lot to offset that big tax amount. Buying a property basically gives you the opportunity to pay down the debt over a long period of time with minimal monthly payments while you are achieving home appreciation. And when the asset is paid off or when you have a certain amount of equity available in this property, you can use that to secure a second property. You can use the financing or you can refinance your property and use the equity that is available to pay down another property or to pay for the bond or registration costs. For most people it might seem out of reach to actually be able to buy a property. But I want to challenge you and just remember that it's possible for basically anyone to purchase a property as long as you have good credit score and you're actually someone that has a good income. And what I mean with that is you can actually buy a house while you are earning less than 7,000 Rand in a month. But if you inflate your expenses and you don't have enough money available at the end of the month, obviously it's not going to happen. Check out my previous video where I talk about advice for teenagers. In that video I cover credit score and living below your means and spending less than you earn. And these are great tips to get you on the right path to actually secure financing for potential property deals in the future. That's it for this video guys. I hope that the information that I shared with you will help you in some way. If it did, please like this video, subscribe to my channel and comment if you have any questions. Please share this with your friends and I'll see you guys next time.